So HD0, one of the questions about HD0, we've got a couple of major questions I think that people have about HD0. We got the new one watt VTX coming out. So uh, one of those questions is penetration and that's not what we're gonna talk about today. But the other question is range. What does this do versus analog? Is this just like another 5.8 system and how's it all fair and stuff? So mm -hmm. because we know how analog works out, uh, Wes decided to put it up against DJI to just compare and see like, hey, what power do I use and what antennas do I use and how does this all work out? Um, and we know DJI's limit, so how far can HD0 go? Yeah. And that's that's what we've come to test today. Um, and here's Wesley Vardy. Uh, if you don't know him, his channel is linked in the video description in the show notes. He does a lot of range testing, long range testing of uh, control links and video links. Uh, makes good content. Look at that B-roll. Look at that sexy B-roll. Come yeah, on. So I would say, you know, if you're interested at all in any of this at all, please go subscribe to Wes's channel. Uh, it's down in the description. Uh, you mm -hmm. can go get the link there. It's Wesley Vardy on YouTube. Uh, but yeah, he does all kinds of great stuff like this. And uh, yeah, it's good information. So, so if you want to get to the results, so he does lots of testing. Uh, yeah, lots of good information. I think yeah, we should look. Just, let's let's start by looking at the 25 milliwatt range test because I want you guys to see he does like usable range and then he does like absolute maximum range. And it's a little bit subjective, right? Where he says, okay, this is not a usable image. And the reason I point that out is he's doing long range stuff. So he's going to get a lot more pen range because he's up in the air. But in addition to that, his standard for what's usable is basically like, can you see the horizon at all? And these are, gr these are still good numbers for comparison between two things, but you shouldn't expect to get this kind of performance uh, in, in, in for like freestyle uh, proximity environment. Right. But, yeah, uh, so um, so yeah, he goes through different settings here, different uh, antenna configurations and antenna options and power options for each of the systems. Um, so here we've got the five kilometer flyable limit at 25 milliwatts. That's pretty damn impressive, honestly. Uh, with Triumph antennas, not even with a high gain antenna, that's with an Omni antenna. That is damn impressive. And he continues to push on. Let me see if we can speed this up a little. Then he goes to one watt, 500 milliwatts, one watt. At one watt, he tries the Triumph antenna versus Singularity antennas. Uh, DJI, of course, craps out at 13 kilometers, as it always does. There's a hard limit there. Get to 16 kilometers yeah, on an so, Omni yeah. antenna. These are both HD0. Uh, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's a hell of a yep. coincidence that it crapped out at 13 kilometers. My bad. So the Triumph beat the Singularity is the takeaway. Good old yep. Triumph. Okay. Oh, my mistake. Thank you for that. And then he also tries the triple feed uh, directional patch, which is a big honk and high gain antenna, and it goes real damn far. It goes yes. real damn far. Look how good this looks yeah. at 10, 11, 12 kilometers. 12 kilometers out. That is clear as heck clear as heck yeah it looks really good man it, it does look really good and he got out to let's look at the final results hang on he got out to uh over, over 30 kilometers on the high gain antennas low gain antennas yeah, he, he got about he basically ran out, ran out of range uh on on the ability for him to fly so and he actually didn't make it home. <laughs> he ran out of battery and had to dump it in a field. He got, he got the quad back in the end. But um, yeah. So this is really exciting for a couple of reasons. One is that people who want true long range can't use DJI because no matter how much output power and how much gain you put on the antenna, DJI will not go further than about 13 kilometers. It's a hard limit. Um, yeah. So if you, if you want that, you can clearly do it with, with uh, HD0. And the other thing is that range and penetration are related. Uh, sure. In most cases, under most sets of circumstances, range and penetration are related. So something with more range will get more penetration. And this is very, very encouraging for the kind of penetration you can get off of uh, SharkBite or HD0, as it were. Yeah. I think HD0 at this point, I think SharkBite's kind of dead. Yeah, I'm trying to right. stop myself from saying it. <laughs> Now, there was something in the video that I thought was a little weird, Blunty, and that is the difference in output power on different frequencies. Did you catch that? 
Uh, yeah, he talks a little bit about the race band powers. Uh, and like, yeah, where you can be, you know, race band one versus race band eight and like effective mm -hmm. power and stuff. Yeah. Um, Owen Peaker, he's not in the USA, so he's not subject to FAA regulations. There are regulations in the country that he's in and that his, his compliance with those is between him and his local authorities. Don't get him in trouble. We need him. <laughs> uh, but he's not in the USA, FAA, so no worries there. Yeah, he, he said there was much lower output power on race one than like on race eight, if I remember correctly. It was like a difference between 300 milliwatts and 1,000 milliwatts. It was a big, big difference. And I thought that was weird because, oh, he's in the chat, Wes. Wes, maybe he could talk it, about it. I feel like but, it was the other way because I like to run a race eight, but I feel like he said race one was better. I did I get it backwards? Here it is. RF power measurements. Uh, I, I thought it was weird that he said there was so much difference because like I've noticed before differences in output power on different uh, channels, like that's a thing, but it's such a huge difference. It really made me wonder if there was something up with like his power meter or something. It, like it was such a big difference. He says R1 is the highest, or at least it was in your measurement. Um, would love to, would love to get some validation of that by somebody like, um, who's the guy who's doing the antenna testing, for example. Oh, Sandor de Bruyne? Sandor. Yeah, Sandor. Somebody with yeah. some actual, like, actual gear. Um, uh, just thought it was really, really suspicious how, how far off it was. Um. Yeah. Regardless. Thank you very much for the great work, Wes Slevardi. Yeah, it was a That's good range test. And shows like if anybody was worried about uh, you know what they might be able to do with that system, at least they know they can get the long range on the one. So mm. Wesley Vardy says he says Carl from HD Zero says race eight drops to about seven hundred milliwatts on lab grade equipment. So that is validation that it is outputting less power on race eight. That's interesting. Yeah. Um, interesting. I I would assume that's the case for any system because you would have it tuned, right? I don't know how that all actually ends up working. I don't know. I mean, when I was testing video transmitters, I did see some wild swings sometimes, but I, I am not sure that, like people say, race one is always higher. And that definitely, I don't think is generalizable. I'm not even sure that every HD zero video transmitter will be like perfectly consistent. Although obviously if Carl says race eight is lower, then that's that's from the horse's mouth, but um, I well, don't like think you should two, assume that. In a two point four system, you work off like a like there's an oscillator, right? So like, yeah. it, does it work the same way? Like, so wouldn't you be have more power at the like the same frequency as the like the is? I, I imagine there's like a premium oscillation rate or whatever the term is for engineering, right? I, I, I don't, don't know. know that, Honestly, yeah. I don't know. Like, what one of the things that I've talked with. Um, uh, freaking Tony cake about is that the amplifier in the VTX, this is for analog VTX is for the tramp. It can be set to various output levels. So you can calibrate the output levels and they calibrate 25 milliwatts because they know racing is very important. But what Tony cake said is, or maybe this was trappy. I can't remember. Uh, was that when you get to max power, basically you just tell the amplifier letter rip and it gives you what it gives you. So it's not uncommon to see at 25 or 200 milliwatts, VTXs are highly calibrated, but then at max power, they're just all over the place. Um, but I don't know if there's a consistent pattern of them being like stronger on lower frequencies or weaker on higher ones. That I don't know. Uh, Pacific Northwest Pilots in the, in the comments says, Trappy wasn't happy about the one watt HC0 range test. He froze up for a solid 10 seconds after somebody commented about it. Uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting statement. That last, yeah, Trappy's last couch was, did not, uh, I don't think he was very happy. Why? It seemed like he was having a bad day in general. Just he was in general? About Laura, he was talking about Laura 50 Hertz and people were mad because it was only 50 Hertz. Uh, and yeah. It's a whole in, thing. in Crossfire? No. Tracer's Laura is only 50 Hertz and he's like mad that everybody's mad about it. I mean, I mean, I can't, I can't be too annoyed because that's what we asked for. Can we have Laura at a slower speed and better range? Uh, but I think people were hoping to get some, like Ghost does Laura at, I think, 120 hertz, 122, I think. I'm not sure. I think that's, it's more than 50 for sure. 
And uh, I think what you're seeing is that cr the, the size of the cross, they need to really redefine Crossfire protocol to like, like, let's say that they said, we're going to do give you the option to do Crossfire light, which is like no Mavlink telemetry, or we only, you know, they do some kind of compression, then they could get it up. But because they've locked... My understanding is that is what CRSF V3 is, but Trappy was very clear that he's not going to increase it. So, like Crossfire V3, from my understanding, is there's the there's the um, like radio to module part, so it increases that UART speed, and then mm -hmm. there's the FC or RX to FC side, so that increases that UART speed, and then there's the OTA part, and the OTA part will let them have variable packet size. But mm -hmm. as far as I know, from what Trappy was saying on the last stream, he's like, we're not we're not increasing the speed. So. He says he basically says that everybody who wants higher speed is wrong. You don't know why you want higher speed. You like, and then he talks about them, the people stealing from him from TBS. It's like it was a very messy stream. That's why I didn't even really put it on here. But since we're talking, about interesting. It, yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting uh, because uh, like TBS was the first to say, uh, not not the first, literally in the world, but Crossfire came along and said. Latency matters. Look, we give you 150 hertz. Look how good the latency is. Uh, and and to be fair, like way back when we were all running S bus with CPPM or whatever, uh, Free Sky receivers with CPPM, and the Spectrum guys were running satellite receivers with Serial, and they had better latency. Like it, it's not the first time that someone claimed that latency mattered, but Crossfire came along and suddenly everybody cared about latency, and TBS was very very happy to ride that to a lot of success. That wasn't the only thing that made them successful, but certainly was up there. And Tracer came along and Tracer and TBS says latency matters. 250 hertz matters. So how can, I mean, I feel like I, I didn't watch the stream, so I don't want to put you in the position of like making their case. But for them to then say, uh, you know what, you don't even know why you want higher, higher, lower latency. Like you're the ones who have been telling me that latency matters. Yeah, right? but he says, yeah, be, like he specifically says, like, you know, there's no benefit in 250 hertz LoRa over 250 hertz FLRC. You don't know what you want, but there is. That's the whole fucking point because it's more consistent. Like that, that's the whole reason we have LoRa on Express LRS. And you're going like, to get better range. The whole point is because we want the same packet rate with a very similar latency, maybe a little longer OTA, like a half a millisecond or a millisecond longer OTA. But you get better consistency and you have a better packet rate all the whole band up. So then you're not having inconsistencies in your RC packet delivery to your fucking beta flight so that you get cleaner, like RC smoothing. And like, there's just so many reasons, but it, it's very one sided when he talks on the on the couch and he just like rants well, for 30 minutes. It's very one sided here as well when you and I sure. sit around and talk about it. So yeah. it's only fair. But uh, I, I do think that I will say that if TBS has a weakness, then I've seen this multiple times. So I feel like there's a pattern here. It's that they are, they feel like they can dictate to their customers what their customers should want. It's a very Apple yes. way of being, you know, Apple. But the difference is that Apple says, screw you, we're getting rid of the headphone jack. And everybody goes, and then everybody goes, oh, you know what? But Air Air AirPods are pretty freaking good. Maybe I don't care. <laughs> and and TBS, TBS does that kind of. Yeah, But like, I, I think about the MMCX connector on the Unify. People said, can we have an MMCX connector? And Trappy went, no, UFL is better. And eventually they're like, fine, it's an MMCX connector. And it's like, I think that they don't always hold what I would call a righteous line. Like there's legitimate reasons why people want 250 Hertz LoRa, as you pointed out. There's legitimate reasons yeah. why that's better. And the yeah. only reason that they're saying it's not is because of marketing and business. Yeah, th that's that's the concern. Exactly right. If they were like, we understand that there would be some benefit that you can see, but we don't agree with putting that benefit in our system currently. Cool. But that's yeah. not the argument that's being said. The argument is that this is not better. You think it's better. And it's not right. Don't tell don't condescend to your customers. That's the bottom line. And it does feel. Uh, well, like TBS often condescends condescend to their customers. That's literally what he was doing was calling specific people out and going, okay, what do you think it is? Tell me to type the answer. <laughs> that's like, like that's even if you're, much... even if you're right, it's a bad look. <laughs> yeah. Even yeah. if you're right. Little... I mean, unless you're Elon Musk, somehow Elon Musk gets away with it. He says, if yeah. you want this from our car, you're an idiot. We're not going to do that. And yeah. somehow he pulls it off. But I don't think Trappy quite has that 
I don't think he's quite there. He, yeah. He's not quite to the point where he can call his customers idiots and get away with yeah. it and have them beg and be like, you're so right, Daddy Musk. We are idiots. <laughs> <laughs> what does 250 right. Hertz Laura mean? I don't understand. Black Moses says, do you want to, you want to touch on that? Yeah. Yeah, so basically 250 hertz means the packet rate, so how fast you're transmitting new packets. Um, and essentially, uh, the faster your packet rate, the more new information is getting delivered about where your gimbals are moving, or the output of your module, basically, um, to your receiver, uh, through your receiver to your flight controller. So you get more information, so your flight controller can make better decisions about how to control. And lower um, latency. Lower latency and also. You, right, lower latency as well. So, but part of the you know, part of Trappy's thing is like, oh, you don't need that much more because you're trying to do a longer range solution, right? But the whole point of the Express LRS is we want both. Yes. You know, we can, you can just shrink the packets down for people who don't want the rest, like you said, some kind of light version, the CR7 V3 will likely be able to do. Bingo, and then bingo. Because you can shrink the packets, you get all this free extra time, extra space to yeah. send more packets in that time frame with the same amount of distance and modulation yeah. and all that. Yeah. yeah, there's there's three things going on here. And one is the packet rate and latency. One is the size of the packets. And then the other part of that sort of trade-off is the range of the system, I guess. And so if you increase the packet rate, you get less range, all else being equal. And if you increase the size of the packets, you have to decrease the packet rate because you have to get, you only have so much data you can get through the pipe. And so what ExpressLRS does done is have very, very small packets. So ExpressLRS can have a high packet rate and great range. TBS Crossfire has very large packets, which means they have things like Mavlink telemetry. They have all these features in their big fat honking packets. But in order to get a, high, a higher packet rate, they have to significantly decrease their range. And that's why Tracer uses FLRC and not LoRa uh, modulation. Um, and what people want is, they want the best of both worlds, which is what ExpressLRS is trying to give them. And TBS is stuck in this, they've got all these features that people, a lot of people don't care about, like Mavlink telemetry. Most FPV pilots don't need that. And uh, ExpressLRS is really putting the pressure on them. And I'm sure that annoys the shit out of Trappy. Yeah, absolutely. That's, and it's cheaper. You know, and it's cheaper. And yeah. developed for free. And has Wi-Fi firmware updates. These, these and, stupid... And have a broken... And Sons Agent X wasn't... And of, the Agent X equivalent wasn't broken for six months. Sons of bitches come along in their free time and develop all yeah. this shit that Crossfire Tracer doesn't have. Then everybody is whining at him and not worshipping him anymore. How does it feel to have competition... It's good for customers, I'll tell you that. All right. Anyway. The, the mid-show rant. The mid-show <laughs> rant. Well done. All yeah. right. Uh, let's see. 